And welcome back, everyone, to the start of a brand new Naruto What If. What if Naruto went rogue and started his own village? Now, this comes to us from a large amount of people, so let's get this out of the way. Um, Blackheart Sean Jr., Wade Wilson, Sean Klugor, Kevin uh, Calho James. I might be butchering. I'm going to probably be butchering a couple of these days. Cameron Walker, Go On. Mike W, Nightwing, Shadows82, Mark Greer, Tron Tron, and a special shout out while you didn't, uh, there, you weren't in the suggestion book, to, um, oh god, was it uh, Screwy Bat, I believe it was, who um, did kind of help uh, me when they described the fanfic they wrote, about how I kind of maybe wanted the fanfic to go a little bit, or the, uh, the what if to go a little bit, but yes, so we are now doing a new what if. What if Naruto went rogue and started his own village? This was a tricky starting point. It's going to be a tricky one going. Because, A, I do have to kind of follow still the story and what happens. But now major changes have to happen in the story because of the story. And this is probably the most fanficy I am going to go on a what if. Uh, because this, on its own, ha the, the changes that have to happen for this what if to even start really kind of contradict the uh, story as a whole. So, how, so what is the most realistic start off point, launch off point for this to happen? And I had to think about that because there's different spots. It's not, uh, different spots where this could happen. Honestly, initially I was thinking maybe after Sasuke goes, uh, goes to Orochimaru or Naruto's kind of just there instead, and instead of Jiraiya, he kind of, leaves the village, but I don't see that as a very effective way, a, a bounce-off point, uh, because a lot of characters who could show up would not be able to show up. So I'm like, okay, how early can we, far back can we, we can't go too early, Naruto can't just leave the village, start a village at like age two, four, five, or eight, or something like that, no, Naruto has to be within ninja age, I think, to start the village. And I think we need to be a little careful what we mean by Naruto starting his own village. Just, what I mean by that basically is just this. Naruto starting a village doesn't necessarily mean Naruto is running the village right out the gate. That's not how that could work. They're just, we have not seen a leader any younger than, say, 15 on Naruto, on Gara's part, be like the Kage of a village. And even then... Gar was 15. We don't know when he became Kage. We assume it was probably like 14. Actually, Gar is a little older than them, actually. So I think he's like 16 or 17 at that point. Point being, while well, he's the youngest Kage there is, I don't think we could see like 12, 13-year-old Naruto running a village, especially as he's depicted in the series. That's not to say I won't maybe um, raise the bar on his intelligence just a bit, but it's got to be a realistic take. That That's always my stipulation. It's got to still adhere to the spirit of the Naruto world. Because now then I'd be changing not just Naruto making a village, I'd be changing Naruto's whole personality in general. That's, that's now just not what we're doing here. So that being said, where is the starting point? I think the starting point is after the Mizuki incident. So Naruto... He's still, and I think it's, and I wanted to make sure Naruto still knew the Shadow Clone Jutsu. I felt that was important. So Naruto's learned the Shadow Clone Jutsu. He helps stop Mizu, Mini, uh, Mizuki. Iruka's like, he's, a, uh, he did it. And, uh, you know, he's impressed by Naruto. But like I said, a big change has to happen here. And I think the big change ultimately is Iruka doesn't pass Naruto. I think that's the catalyst right there. So Naruka doesn't pass Naruto. And instead, he actually unintentionally doubles down on the fact that Naruto didn't graduate. And he said, thank you, Naruto. I have no doubt next time you're going to graduate for sure. And Naruto realizes, that's right, I didn't graduate. I'm going to, oh, and he's just disappointed. And he's like, yeah. And he, but he puts on the fake smile and he's like, yeah, absolutely right. And so... They go back. Now he returns the scroll. But one thing Naruto found in the scroll, and this is a little change I'm doing here as well, obviously, is he found something that had the Uzumaki seal on it. He noted the swirling pattern of the Uzumaki seal. Looks like the swirl on the Konoha uniforms of like Jonin and Chunin, and even on his uh, 
hell, even on Naruto's outfit. And he, um, uh, and he sees it and he feels drawn to it. So he's like, he's like, well, how do I, and he remembers something briefly about seals that he learned about the concept of blood seal. So he nicks his finger, acts and a scroll pops out. And he's like, he holds on to it. He can't read it right now. So after the, after the fact of being more or less saying no to, he goes and he, you know, he, he's reading at his home and he's at his home. He's reading. So he opens the scroll and he starts to read it. And in essence, he says, if you were reading this, you were maybe among the last of the Uzumaki. Yeah. The fact you are, the fact that you were able to open it means that you were open the seal that the seal the scroll was in means you were an Uzumaki blood. We, and he explains we were once a, ma- a, pride, a proud nation, mighty nation that helped found the Leaf Village with our uh, cousins, the Senjus. And he explains about the downfall, all that, of Uzu and Uzumaki and how there's only so few of us left scattered to the winds. Uh, I don't know what you will do with some, the knowledge that is contained in the scroll, which will contain some Uzumaki knowledge. Not all of it, but seals, the sealing techniques, all that. Uh, you know, the idea of telling them what, you know, the, uh, they were able to contain tail beast in Cherokee. Naruto knows he's the nine tailed in Cherokee. So he, it, he reads this and he's like, you know, do what you will. Perhaps one day the Uzumaki can rise to glory. And Naruto is contemplating this and he's thinking, Uzumaki. And he realizes that, and that's where that moment is like, to bring the Uzumaki clan back, to bring back Uzu. I get, I'm not, and maybe it's time I go. Maybe, maybe I don't, the village, this village doesn't want me and I, I'm not, I couldn't make, I couldn't be a ninja here. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll bring back Uzumaki, the Uzu, Uza, uh, Uza, what was it? Konoha, uh, I can't, I'm trying to remember exactly what the name of uh, Uzu was actually, like the Japanese name for, uh, the uh, land of Whirlpool, land of Uzu, which would, uh, land of Whirlpool's, uh, Uzu no Kuni. There we go. Or Land of Eddies. So there you go. And that's what this is, by the way. This is the destroyed remnants of that te- village. Now, where is Uzu located? I was trying to find a map of the Naruto country, like the country that Shinobi live in in this world, but uh, couldn't find a really good one. Apparently, it's a small... Um, they, they are a small island east of Konoha. Um, it, was, it, it was located on an island off of the coast of the Land of Fire. Now, you might be thinking, well, Naruto just has to go east. True, he does, but let's be clear. I'm trying, I'm only giving, I'm not uh, dumbing Naruto down, but I'm also not making him a genius or anything like that. He probably doesn't know where Uzu is, right? He probably has to ask around. Uh, but he's, he, he makes a decision, like, he's, like, the only people here who really like him at all, that he knows of, he doesn't know he not likes him, is the third and Iruka. That's it. And Ichiraku and his uh, daughter. So, Tenchi. I think it's, that's his name, right? Ichiraku Rama, that's his actual name. It's like Tenchi Ichiraku. Point being, those are the only... So, he goes. Yeah, he has, he has his a standard bowl. They even give him a bowl in the house because they are upset. They're like, You'll make it next time. And it's one of the few times he's confided. Like, I want to thank... He just says, I want to thank you all for everything you did. You were, you've been kind wherever people had. You helped feed me. Yeah, you, you've never judged me at all, so thank you. And they're like, "Wait, Naruto, what are you?" And he's, uh, "Don't worry, I'll, I'll make sure to, I'll make sure to come visit you at, at some point." And he, they realize by what he was saying, he's leaving. And honestly, they can't blame him for it because they've seen how the village cheats them, and they're just like, "Find a better way, kid." He he leaves he leaves messages with Iruka and the third. And he casually walks, he, he sneaks out of the village immediately. Because being the Jinchuriki of the night tells me he isn't just going to be left, given free reign. However, he's a civilian. So, the fight, despite the fact he's a Jinchuriki, the third actually doesn't have any jurisdiction over what his movements are. If he was a shinobi, that'd be, sure. But the fact is, the only reason they'd have any sort of real, um say over what he does is the fact that he's the nine tails in Turkey. That's it. So he, now what he does do though, is make sure is keep them occupied. He leaves a clone, uh, with chakra available. He pumps 
some extra chakra in because he figures out, okay, maybe this will make the clone last longer. I bet he even tests it out a bit. And he ultimately leaves a clone and he sneaks out of those using transformation jutsu and he's gone. He ditches his orange coat. He wants to take it, but he knows he'll stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, and so he's gone. And it takes a little while for them to figure things out until Naruto, the clone Naruto, eventually gives the third his... Um, uh, gives the third his message to him. And then the clone pops out of existence. And he realizes, wait, this is a clone? And we'll leave Konoha there for now. Because we now are going to focus mostly on Naruto for this part. We'll get back to Konoha in a little bit. Well, near the end. About how I think I want to play that out. But right now, let's talk about Naruto and his trip to Uzu. So Naruto is... he's. Doing the best he can, figuring things out. He can survive on his own because he's been a, he's been alone for as long. He can survive. One of the things he's doing though is learning the, some of the sealing that you can that he can learn from the Uzumaki scroll, including getting learning not even knowing about basic seals, all that. I'm sure something about that's in there. But we, ne except for the magnet release, he learns from Shimkaku. We've never actually known if Naruto could learn was had the aptitude for seals. Being an Uzumaki doesn't necessarily mean you have the aptitude for it. It just means that. That is something your clan learned. But not everyone in the clan learns the techniques of the clan, usually. Um, but more, more than likely, um, Naruto... I imagine Naruto probably has an aptitude for it. Because if it's something that piques his interest, Naruto definitely leans towards having an aptitude for it. He just need, It just needs to pique his interest. That's what it is. And the idea of what SEALs can do, all that, that piques his interest. But he's finding it, you know, a little slow going. So he creates some clones just to maybe speed the process up. Not realizing, at least at first, that he is unintentionally using the clones for the training purpose that they'd be later used for. So he's actually able to speed things up quite a bit. Not realizing, too, that he's doing the kind of a chakra control exercise, too, by creating clones, keeping them active for a while, and then returning the chakra and all that. That technically would be a chakra control exercise, not a very effective one he doesn't know how to like tree walk or water walk at this point but still so he's picking up on seals basic storage seals explosive seals smoke bomb type seals like he you know, used to make smoke bombs now he's like cool i can like use this he's like sealing smoke from fire into a seal he's like creating smoke bombs with that and maybe even with his clones figuring out like a basic barrier seal like he's getting down seals pretty efficiently problem is naruto doesn't immediately know where to land a whirlpool is I mean, maybe he does, but he didn't know what direction he was heading. That might be black. Actually, that might be it. The directions are in the uh, the scroll for where the land of Uzu was, but he's he's not um, he's not aware of what direction like he's going outside of the village. <laughs> that could, I think that's a very Naruto thing to happen. So he's going out and he's taking cutting corners in all the different like lesser lands, including the land of grass. Where at one point he hears a scream and he sees a girl being attacked. And this is where I want to give a shout out to um, that so shout out to um, uh, Screwy Bat because, or was it Ball Bat? Either way, Screwy. Uh, because the idea you gave me, I'm not going to go 100%, not doing every single one that you said, but it would make sense. And this would be kind of what Naruto's whole concept of the village would be a village where anyone can be accepted, outcasts are welcome. That kind of thing. Anyways, he, he runs into this girl who's, like in the original, being attacked by an animal. Now, we don't know what her parentage, really. We never met her parents or anything like that. We assume she was probably on her own. But she's being attacked. She's, would she be a ninja at this point? Yeah, she actually probably would be. She's like a year older than them. And so he, you know, he's he uses the clones, kicks the, beats the crap out of the bear, uses a smoke, uh, like a flash bomb, and just scares the bear off. And the girl's like, huh, huh. Thank you. Thank you. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, it's, uh, who are, uh, who are you? My name is Marta Uzumaki. Uh, and the girl's like, my name is Karin Uzumaki. You're an Uzumaki? I'm Karin Uzumaki. I said, what? Wait, you're and Naruto. And, they're, and she's meeting Karin, who was younger at the time. They are roughly in the age, same age group. I think she's like a year older than them. So she's about 13 to his 12 at this time. Um, and, you know, I was like, wait, you're, you're an Uzumaki too? I was like, wait. Um, yeah, and wait, what, what, what was going on? I was I was looking for uh, some I was looking for some uh, you know some I was just foraging and or some supplies and that bear came and attacked me and I just couldn't do anything. 
No, no, it's great. Well, wait, you're a ninja too? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a ninja of the grass. What about you? And Naruto doesn't say, Naruto smart enough, like, can't tell her I'm going rogue. I'm looking for a, a village. You could leave me in our village. And Naruto's like, I'm looking to start my own village. Like, uh, and, you know, all the villages, from what I understand, are not the best. Like, I, my, I was from a village and they didn't treat me right. And I don't want to give up on my dream to be Kage and be respected, but also to look over people who are uh, overlooked uh, and who are treated badly. That's that's my dream. His, the thing about dreams is dreams can stay the same but change their purpose. I think that's what happens here. Naruto's dream to be Hokage stays the same, but except now his dream is to be the Kage of his own village and to basically be the one who protects and looks after him. Um, and so, uh, Karin kind of like, here's that, I was like, that, that sounds nice, I'll admit, like, the, uh, uh, I don't, it's gland of grass, but it, it's nice, but I don't, I don't know if I'm cut out to be, I don't, I've felt alone ever since, I can't remember, I don't have any family or all that, and, um, so wait, I mean, well, do you want to come along? And Karin, Karin is, like, kind of blushing a little bit. I was like, yeah, Mark, I, I mean, I could always use someone to help me build. And she's blushing a little bit. Because she did note when she first met Narda, his chakra was very bright and warm. She did feel the uh, Karama chakra. But she was very, like, enamored with his chakra. And that's kind of why she was obsessed with Sasuke for so long. Apart from the fact he was good looking. Because his chakra was very cold, powerful. She was attracted to hear his very bright warm, his smiles, and fashion. She's blushing a bit. It's like, well, I'm, I am still an official ninja, but I guess I could. Uh, and she, and so... Naruto goes, he goes and visits the ramen stand there. He's like, oh, this ramen's delicious. Like, Thank you. And we don't get enough business. Like, oh, really? Um, no, well, I mean, uh, I could always, uh, I could always use a ramen stand, a ramen maker ramen going, really? Where are you going? He kind of drops the hand. Like, I'll let you know. Uh, maybe I'll, hey, hey, I'll let you know when the time's right. Maybe, uh, maybe you can come work, uh, live where, uh, work where I'm living. And so Karin basically just says to the leader of their village, I don't know if you count as a Kage, but the leader of their village that, Look, I appreciate this, but I'm I'm not ready to be a ninja here. I don't think I can be a ninja. And the leader accepts it. They don't have a lot of ninja, but it's not an easy life. It's like, I think I'm going to leave the village if it's all right. And, you know, she gives back her headband and he, they bid a farewell. I think it's respectful. And so she decides to join Naruto. And they're enjoying it. She's, she's working on, she's kind of starting to crush you on a little, because he's very, he's a little dopey, definitely, but in a fun way, in a, in a very earnest way, and she kind of finds that cute. And by the way, before anyone goes, ew, I'm doing a Kari Naruto pairing, I'm not saying I'm not necessarily doing that, I'm not saying I'm not, because there are going to be other female characters that will be in the village. But, let's be honest, how are those clans, how do those clans stay clans? They had to inbreed a little bit. Uh, but they're all, the Karin and Naruto are probably far enough related that's not that gross. Like, they're, I don't know what their relation really is. They gotta be cousins somehow, however many times removed, at minimum. And as long as they're not first cousins, it's, it's really not that gross. It's a little gross, obviously, but, but it's less gross the farther you're removed. So they're going around, and Naruto's like, so Uzu, and wait, so you're going, and he explains to Karin, you're going, and she's like, you're going back to Uzu? But... I mean, we haven't been to, I mean, I don't, I don't was never, I wasn't born in our home village. I don't even know where it is. Yeah, uh, so, and Naruto explains, yeah, it's on this side. It's like, but you realize we're heading west, right? And Naruto's like, uh, oh. <laughs> so I guess we're going to have to do a round trip. Yeah, I, I mean, I did kind of leave the village uh, without really knowing where I was going. And Carl's like, huh, he's cute when he's dopey. And so they go, they're going around. They're basically, they're going in a big circle, more or less. And they're, they're actually, and one of the things they're doing is they're getting more experience. Naruto's actually, because she's Uzumaki, he feels he can trust her. And, um, you know, they're actually learning more about the Uzumaki sealing arts. She heard that they could use the thing called the adamantine chains, which, by the way, Naruto, you can argue this. This is one of the few things that I'm not calling NC, uh, NC Hammer out. I, NC Hammer's great. He knows way more about this than I ever will. I disagree with him that Naruto can use the adamantine chains. He says he used that against Kurama. No, that was Kushina's adamantine chains. Uh, that he, that was the last of her chakra that was being used. That's why it broke. That's why it snapped. Because uh, there wasn't a lot of her chakra left. Uh, Naruto can't use it, I think, it's because he, he's not a pure Uzumaki. Like, that's why he doesn't have the red hair. Or Karin, we know, can use it. And, like, whoa! And, like, Karin, 
tries to focus in on it, but she can't really. She can feel it's kind of there, and maybe she could tap into it, but it's going to take some effort. She also says she's got some healing abilities, too. Uh, she knows some medical ninjutsu. Not a lot, mind you, but she's also got an ability that if you bite on it and suck on her chakra, you can recover. And no, I was like, well, I, I mean, I don't hope that. I, I hope I don't have to do that at any point. It sounds like it hurt. It's like <laughs> Kari kind of blushes a little bit. I can imagine her being even kinky even now. Just a little bit. Like, no, no, no. She shows a couple bite marks that she's had when she's had to save people. I was like, I actually kind of let you blush. I kind of like it a little bit. And Naruto was like, why? Naruto being a little dope was like, why would you like it? And the, and the fox all the way in there. It's like, oh my God, he's an idiot. So anyway, uh, let's move on. And so they're going, they're traveling. They're occasionally saving some people from bandits, endearing themselves to the folks. Naruto's giving them the whole, it's like, you know what? If you ever want a place to say, I'll send for you. Uh, I'll send for you when the time is ready. All kind of stuff like that. If you want to come, great. If not, cool on that. And one of the things they run into is a mission gone awry. Where they run into uh, some waterfall ninja who are under attack, they end up aiding, and I'm not going to go into any specific what's going on here, they, basically what's happening is they are under attack, Kari and Naruto kind of end up saving them, and Kari even is able to, like, man, uh, Naruto gets in trouble, Kari is able to manifest a chain, like, you did it, you manifested, I did, oh my god, it's only one, but still, she kind of throws it out like a, like a whip, like a spider web, just, just like Spider-Man, um, and, yeah, by the way, I'm realizing right now, I wrote a lot for part one, I'm not going to be able to put this all in part one, I'm going to have to part two it, uh, but either way, we're, we're just going to keep going. It's 21 minutes. I might go to 30. And they see it. And they have a couple of shinobis. Shinob like, yo, okay. Like, we're fine. Here, just bite, bite my arm. She, they suck on the chakra and help recover him. One girl sucking on the chakra helps her recover. And is like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's like, you should have been more careful. Um, not that we need it. Not that uh, it's uh, don't bother helping. I don't know who you are. You're from clearly ninja of something. We're, we're not really ninja anymore. We're... We were ninja, but as uh, in our text says, I've never been a ninja. Uh, but you know jutsu. Doesn't mean I've been a ninja. And like, well, anyway, thanks for your help, but we need to get going. Come on. You need to keep going. Say, wait, don't wait talking to her like that. That's none of your business. We appreciate you for your help. And then, hey, hold on right there. Just man, we uh we uh, say it's just saved your asses. You at least owe us an explanation. <laughs> and there's like, fine, whatever. She's she's just she's just uh she's a burden on the village. We're all she's only around because we uh, because the leader keeps us, um, keeps us, uh, keeps her around. Uh, and we, uh, and honestly, we're, honestly, uh, you probably didn't, you probably just did us a hindrance by keeping her around. Uh, and, and Fu, as it's now revealed, we know as a seven tails from Turkey, is kind of just down in the press, and she's used to it. So, like, hey, shut up! And Naruto actually flares a little chakra, like, a little bit of the nine tails, because I, shut up! It's like, Ugh. It's like, you, who the hell are you to just treat her like that? Why? Because she's different than you? Uh, different than you? If it wasn't for it, uh, I bet, it, I'm willing to bet, and Naruto actually puts that, I'm willing to bet if it wasn't for her, you probably would be dead right now, right? And the guy, they can't answer because they're, he's right. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's like, you know what? We'd like to actually talk to your, we'd like to talk to your leader, if that's all right. Uh, it's like, what? Who, you, who the hell are you to the man? The guys are just saying, the two, and the cards like, the two just saved your asses. And they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like they're in a rough spot like that because these guys they're probably only tuning and honestly they may have even been hoping to have food get killed or whatever because as far as you know food didn't have a good rough uh go in the village and ultimately she was she met kakuzu was happy to meet a fellow a rotter for a ninja but it was betrayed the only one who was actually ever good to her was the leader apparently and so they go to go through the waterfall all that and uh they meet the leader who i don't even know the leader's name i can't remember it there's that um, OVA they do with the uh, land of waterfall, uh, but anyway, I was like, and who are you? And it's like, I was like, yeah, Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto and Kari Uzumaki. Oh, it was, and they both hear that. The Uzumaki thing was well known, so I think everyone's kind of heard about that. It's like Uzumakis to think that to think I'd meet a live Uzumaki, uh, and two of you know less. You're uh, the, what, uh, what brings you here? It's like we'd like to talk to you about the treatment of as like of who, and. And he then glares at the two ninjas, like, really, what about the treatment? And they're just kind of, like, a little uneasy. Yeah, apparently, it, you're. I guess you're aware then that she hasn't been treated well here. And he just sends, gets a couple extra ninjas, like, could you take them and uh, talk to them? I'll be there later on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He's like, I'm aware of Fu. I'm trying my best to help Fu out in this village, but unfortunately, 
no matter what we do, she just can't seem to be accepted. I'm sorry, Drew. It's like, no, it's not your fault. You, you've never been bad to me. It's not about me. It's about them and it's about how they've been treating you. If the village can't accept you, that's that's a problem. Why is Vu, uh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid the reason Vu is, isn't is widely uh, liked in the village is a bit of a secret. Uh, it, it would be the highest ranked secret. Naruto thinks that as a, would you say it's a, a secret ranked one through nine? <laughs> and he, Naruto thinks about, and he thinks about that for a second. Where he's like, uh, yes, if I were to say it'd be a level seven secret. May I ask how you would know? you know what kind of level of secret it would be. I carry, let's just say I carry a level nine secret with me. And his eyes widen, he's like, he's got the nine-tailed fox in him. Oh, uh, but that's supposed to be in Konoha. And he puts some seals on, he's like, so I take it you're the container of the nine tails? Uh, and Naruto is like, yeah. I, and, and so what are you doing? I, I must admit, I'm surprised. I thought the nine tails was being, was in Konoha. It was until, I decided I didn't want to be there anymore. And he explains that he couldn't, he just couldn't be a ninja and that he still wants to be the Kage of a village, to be the leader, to be respected, but to protect as well. And, you know, he's going to, and what his goal ultimately is, is to form a new Uzumaki, not Uzumaki clan, but new Uzu, new land of Whirlpool. And yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, look, Fu is a ninja of your village. I, and like I can't ask for very much from that, but actually at this point, would Fu have been a ninja? Yes, yeah, no, yeah, yes, yes, because we see her in the filler arc between in a filler arc they did to show the Chuning's hands where other people she was there for those she so yeah she would have been a ninja instead. Um, so and yeah and look I would love to, I and I'd like to offer Fu a place in the village if possible like if she if she wants and Fu's like wait you want me. You want me to just come with you like like that? Like, only if you want. To. And Nafu's hearing this. She, she's hearing that this is the, he's the container of the Chinchiriki of the Nine Tailed Fox, and like she is so he actually understands a lot of what she's probably gone through. To the point where he left the village, and now he wants to start something new, and fresh, with people who can respect each other and not judge each other for what they're going through. And was it like Shibuku or something like that? That was the name of the leader of the Land of Waterfall? Uh, Land of Waterfall. Hold on. I'm gonna, I want to at least find the name of that guy. Because I, I do remember the name. And Shibuku is... I'm going to say Shibuku right now. Uh, Land of Waterfall. Uh, waterfall. Land of Waterfall is Naruto. Which is a great name. Takaka Akuri. Which is a great name for a village, by the way. Um, so the leader is... Leaders. She, I was right. Shibuku was one of the leaders, and I think that was the the good leader, right? The the leader that we actually, um, yes, that was the one we actually <laughs> rooted for. Uh, so I was, I actually got that on the note. I'm proud of myself for remembering that. But uh, Shibuku, uh, and they do, and, she, and the land of waterfalls, while not one of the major, the little just does have some powerful. So they have that um, divine tree water, I think it is, uh, which up your chakra, but decrease your lifespan. And they had the secret technique of the grudge fear, which is what the, what uh, Kakuzu you took from the village. And so he thinks, um, uh, and, it's like, and he looks at Ty, he's like, you are, and it's, it's one of the things that, you know, the village is, it's one of the things I put in the dumbest Naruto moment, things in Naruto list, where you have a Jinchuriki, you have someone who has the power of a tail beast in you and could harness it if properly taught. Instead, you just treat them like garbage and you're literally inviting a nuclear bomb to drop on the village if you're not careful, but you're idiots out of fear. And he sees, and this is just not a good place for Fu. Shibuku laments. It's like, it's up to you, Fu. You don't have to stay here if you don't want to. These this, these two are, I feel, are going to, uh, I, I believe in what they do and you will have my support if you need it. Uh, and, you know, Fu, uh, Fu just, uh, you know, they spend the day kind of getting to know Fu, and Fu is very kind and sweet and kind of friendly and bubbly, and she shows she can fly, and they're all like, whoa, it's amazing, you're awesome, and she blushes, and so, ultimately, she does agree to leave the village. She gives Shibuku a hug and goodbye, and they head out. Naruto says, I promise that, you know, when we get an outing, I will send, uh, I will send some people. We can, and, uh, we can always use allies for the village. And uh, if you're willing to be allies, 
if you're willing, we will. Uh, I more than we are more than willing to, you know, ally ourselves with you when the time's right. And he and she both say, "I look forward to this alliance, young Uzumaki, or should I say, future Uzokage?" And so they're all traveling, getting to know each other. Karin is now getting a little jealous of Fu. Fu is blushing around Naruto as well. Naruto is ever oblivious to this, which I think is hilarious. And they're getting near the land of waves, the land of mi- near the mist, land in that area. Getting closing in on Uzu. And along the way, they run run aground. And this would be before the mist, uh, the land, uh, village in the mist. Uh, the land of waves. Sorry, the land of waves. This would be before the land of waves. They run across two figures at a stand. They're you know, like eating at like a small, like little restaurant. And they're running across two figures who are also eating. Actually, I guess four figures, technically. And uh, they're talking and... Uh, they know. They note their presence. They note the giant sword on one of their backs, and they they look and they and say, "Hey, what are you looking at, kid?" Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, "Sorry, uh, just uh, we're just talking about where we're gonna, what's going to happen when we get to uh, get to our, our, our uh, get to where we're going." Oh, we're and the other the young boy, very effeminate looking boy. Where will we be going? Uh, and, uh, we're looking to start, I'm looking to start my own village. <laughs> the guy's, you start your own village? You're barely out of your diapers, kid. Oh, yeah, what the, who the hell, the hell do you think you are? Trust me, I tried taking, I tried to take a village once. It didn't go well. Uh, so you try to take a village? Is that, and who, who exactly are The name's Zabuza Momochi. Uh, and Haku Momochi. I mean, as far as we know, Haku probably should have taken a survey. Uh, but technically it's ha- Haku, uh, Haku Yuki. Um, but he probably took Zabuza's name, let's be honest. Um, and so, the run-in with Zabuza and Haku has happened. This is where I'm going to leave part one. Uh, I had actually a lot more written down, but it became very clear very fast that I was not going to be able to do all of part one that I wrote down in part one. So, actually, and honestly, the rest of part one might end up as a part, just all of part two. Because we got a lot of build-up for this. Naruto, Karin, and Fu are going to be the first main and ha- guaranteed inhabitants of New Uzu. But uh, until then, yeah. Now, what, by the way, has been going on with Konoha? Just to sum it up, because I did bring, mention I'd bring that up. The third lament. And he, co- and he questioned maybe going to fight Naruto, but ultimately he realized what would be the point. Naruto no longer wants to be here, and he doesn't blame Naruto for it. The, in his message, he notes that Naruto mentioned that he and Uruka were the only two that really cared about him. And, yeah, and honestly, even Donzo's probably unaware of the fact Naruto's gone. Uh, because he's just, he's been, because he never tried to take Naruto as a kid, so, why would he, he's probably been keeping tabs, but even then, because Naruto left a clone in the village, he's probably unaware, so, he's probably has the answer to the council, we don't know there's a council, that's a fan-made term, but the Shinobi elders, Donzo, all that, and sure enough, the answer to him is like, Naruto is gone. What do you mean Naruto is gone? He's left the village. Left the what do you mean he's left the... Uh, and even does it. You fail, Saratomi. Does it you to think that the village would be... That the nine-tailed fox would be out. Nar, now, now this... And basically, they're all clearly saying, we need to go and forget Naruto back. The village needs its in Turkey. And this is where I think... Uh, Saratomi finally has had it. He finally... Only she's shocked killing a town on all three of them. And just... It's like, enough from all of you! And even Donzo, as hardened as he is, flinches like, like, like he was not expecting that. The reason Naruto left is because of all of you. Because you looked at him only as the nine-tailed fox. And not the boy who needed not the boy who needed a family. A boy a boy who needed guidance. You treated them only as a weapon. And now we've lost him, and we deserve it. We did not deserve the honor of his sacrifice. Sacrifice that Minato left to us. Sacrifice he Naruto made every day. Uh, and that was and that was uh, that was wasted and treated treated like a cruel joke, off uh, because you decided uh, to be appropriate to spread fear. And he looks at Donzo uh, of this boy instead of uh, and to be worshipped as a hero. You know as well as I do that the villagers, what the villagers ultimately saw of him, how they treated him. Uh, it was a miracle he stayed here as long as he did. Uh, and we will not take any measure against Naruto. Do I make myself clear? And uh, no, no, and Naruto. Everybody goes, Naruto has made his decision. He's decided to go, he's decided to go and, rest- and to make his own village in his own way. 
should he ever decide to come back, we will not hold any ill will against him. Uh, what, and what if he decides to come back for revenge? Sorry, Toby. It just looks at him, scoffs. Uh, it would that that would be an act of war, Sour Toby. What then? If on that unlikely scenario uh, that Naruto decides to come back and wage war against us, and Sour Toby actually gets a cold, a hard look on his face, a sad look, but a hard look. I'll make that I'll make that decision myself and take responsibility for it, but not before. Do I make any just? Do I make myself clear? And I've got a, I've got the whole Kane thing going on, kind of like a Yama, a Yamamoto thing. Do I make myself clear? My Yamamoto's a lot better than Sarah Toby. Uh, and, they, and they're both like, and they, 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 they might be, they're trying to talk big game. Like, they tried to put, like, pull power plays in Tsunade, pull minor one with putting Sai on that team. They're not getting away with any shit this time. This all falls on them. And Sarah Toby is pointing it out hard. And it's like, there will be no moves made against him. Now, Donzo is not so... Donzo's going to make some moves. Donzo's going to send some root after him. Not going to say how that's going to go. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. Not going to say exactly what will happen and how Naruto gets out of it. It's not going to go that well for Donzo and the root. But I went way longer than I need to, but I think it was important in establishing this setup. Now I can keep more in my 20 and 25 range. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you folks on Wednesday next week for the next one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.